continue with the message that I started last Sunday. It's a long message. I don't think I can even finish it today. But I'm going to, I'm going to try, but if not, I'll do it again next Sunday. So, it's a message I have titled, Dealing with the Wiles of the Devil. Dealing with the wiles of the devil. Wiles are the ammunition, the tactics, the schemes that Satan has got in his arsenal that he uses in destroying people. Okay, these are, if you want to say, it's like going to a, an armory, an armory of, let's say, the United States Army. If you go there, they've got piles of different kinds of guns and munitions that they use in warfare. And it's only when you attack them that you will know that there are some things that you've never seen before. In these last days, Satan is going to unleash a lot of his stuff that man has never seen before. And we got to be ready. We got to be ready so that it doesn't take us on our works. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. Go to Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm going to read from verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. If you get to it, start to your feet for a minute. Let's read the word of God. Amen. Ephesians 6, chapter 10, I mean verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and on your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Like I've said, God has already warned us. So it's not like something that we don't know. God has warned us that in the last days, Satan is going to unleash some things on this world that we've never seen. He's going to unleash some evil on this world that most of us will be wondering what is going on. So, I'm going to go over a few of them. I'm not going to be able to go, I mean, it take us a whole year to go over all the arsenal of Satan, and I don't even know all of them. Bible gives us some of them, but this is why God says put on the armor of God, because
us some of the things that Satan has got. The only thing we can stop it is by putting on clothing ourselves with the armor of God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, he says, Lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Lest Satan takes advantage of us. If you are ignorant of Satan's devices, you take advantage of him. Can I get an amen? amen. If you are ignorant, you take advantage of you. That's why we need to be very knowledgeable in the times that we live in. Because Satan is out there and is using everything in his arsenal to destroy the human race and to send them to hell. Amen. I want us to examine a few of them, okay? A few of the wiles of the devil. Even if you go to the beginning of the Bible, when God created everything, God looked at it and said, it's very good. I mean, God was excited about what he has created. This is very good. But what happened? Satan wanted to turn what is very good to be very bad. And that's his scheme. Okay? Anywhere he finds something good happening, he wants to make it evil. That's is the scheme that he operates in. You know, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 through 17, it says that the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat it, you will die. You surely die. You go to chapter 3, verse 1. It says, now the serpent was very crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Look at how he has twisted it. God said, you are free to eat of any of the trees in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan comes on and says, did God really say you must not eat from any tree? Hello? Yeah. Completely different from what God said. And yet, that's how he operates. He always wants to twist, but he twists it so carefully that if you're not careful, and if you're not knowledgeable, yeah. you would think that's the word of God. Yeah. This is why I keep telling people, you must be conversant with the word of God. Yeah. Don't just casually read it and just go, you know, oh, I read the word of God, so yeah. I've read two chapters. Study it, right. study the word. Yeah. That way, it doesn't matter how he twist it. You can always find the truth. His first thing he wants to do is to cast doubt on the Word of God. He wants to twist the Word of God in such a way that people begin to wonder, I mean, is this really the Word of God? Guys, turn the air conditioner on for me. I'm sweating. Is it truly the Word of God? Hello? Amen. He always wants to cast doubt. God did not create the Word. The Word came into being by its own evolution. And today, majority of the world believes that the world was not created by any God. It just came by its own. And it's even 
a crime to even challenge the theory of evolution if you are in the academic world. If you are a professor and you are teaching science and you challenge the theory of evolution, you probably won't get anywhere because it's become a religion. Everybody is believing it, and if you veer from it, they will punish you. Satan is very wicked. He knows he can fight God, but he knows he can fight you and me. This is why God has asked us to put on the whole armor of God. Are you all listening to me? This is why God says, listen, this being that I created, who has violated the laws of the universe, he has risen up against me and against everything that I've done. I've created him very wise and smart, very powerful. You, you have no power against him unless you put on the whole armor of God and get filled with the Holy Spirit. This is why Jesus, before he went to heaven, he commanded his disciples to go and wait. Go and wait until you have received the power of the Holy Spirit. Because without the power of the Holy Spirit, you don't stand a chance with the devil. Jesus commanded, it wasn't just like a suggestion, don't do anything. Go and wait. It won't take too long. Go and wait until the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And when he comes, he will teach you, he will lead you, he will instruct you, and he will give you information that you don't know. Can I get an amen? Amen. So, you need to know the word of God. Don't casually know it. Don't casually know it. A lot of Christians casually know the word of God. Study it. Get to understand what the word is teaching. Because he uses the word. Satan uses the word of God. Go check the temptation of Jesus. He quoted the scriptures. But he quoted it wrongly. And Jesus had to correct him. Okay? So, know the word of God. And be filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, the, the church does not emphasize the Holy Spirit much. They only, they only talk about, you know, the word, the word, the word. The word is good. But the Holy Spirit is the one that enlightens the word in our spirits and in our hearts. And we need to have the Holy Spirit in our lives. I want to share with you today some warnings and some encouragements from the scripture that will help you keep your love for God burning brightly in these last days. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 15, the Apostle John said, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Or the Apostle James' warning in James 4, chapter, verse 4, says, Don't you know the friendship, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God automatically. Hello? The world with its evil ways is not your friend. In many ways, it is attractive, seductive, and always calling for our attention. It wants to pull you into habits and ways of thinking that are contrary to God's ways. This world with its evil ways is not your friend. Hello? You need to ask yourself, 
Am I being drawn into the world? And look at some simple things in your life. Here's a simple way to find out if you're becoming conformed to this world. Ask yourself, would I be pleased to have Jesus see what I chose to wear today? Would I be pleased if Jesus were to walk into this room, would, she, would he be pleased with what you're wearing? Would I invite Jesus into my house to watch the kinds of movies that I watch? Would I speak to Jesus with the same language I use with my friends and co-workers? If yes, then that's excellent. If not, then you are becoming conformed to this world. Do not allow yourself to drift Amen. into this world. Amen. Because the friends of this world automatically becomes the enemies of God. Can I get an amen? amen. Satan has many, many things in his arsenal that he's using today. He has used them for years, but there are some that I think he just kept them for the end times. And so maybe we can get a few of them and, and see what, what's going on, okay? Satan has many different approaches into attacking us or attacking the word of God. He will attack God's character first. You know, in the Garden of Eden, what he said was, God is lying to you. If you eat of this thing, you will not die. That's attacking God's character straightforward. Okay? He will mix a little error with the truth. Hello? This is why you see how he twisted the word of God. God said, you can eat everything except. Then he came to did the God say you can't eat anything? That's not what God said. He just twisted it a little bit. Okay? He will misquote scriptures so that it says something he never meant to say. He will encourage us to trust our own efforts for attaining salvation. Today, there are a lot of so-called Christian organizations that you just have to work your way into salvation. You got to do stuff. Listen, there's nothing you can do to be saved. It's the grace of God. It's the gift of God. Yes, when you become a Christian, then do the good works. But you can't do good works to attain salvation. Otherwise, there would have been no need for Jesus to come and die. You've got to get saved first and then do the good works. But there are people that are emphasizing good works first. Which, and it's so, it's so cunning that you would think they're telling you the truth. But it may not be the truth. He would try to get us ensnared by worldliness. In other words, we would love the world so that the love, we love for approval. We want people to say, oh, can you see, have you seen what Pastor David is doing? Have you been to his church? Oh, he's just doing great things for God. And then my head swells and I begin to think, you know, I'm doing something, but am I doing something that God will approve? A lot of churches are imitating this world. They're using worldly methods to build church because they want everybody to applaud them of having the biggest church in town, okay? There's nothing wrong with you having a big church in town, but how are you building that church? Are you using methods that is not approved of God? Can I get an amen? amen. Satan will do everything to throw us out of balance. He will get us to trust gimmicks, follow charismatic leaders, 
and be swayed by Christian peer pressure rather than the Lord and His Word. I think Satan even is the one that wants pastors or Christians to encourage the idea of celebrating pastors. You know, this pastor, I don't want to mention any name. This pastor, oh man, have you seen what he's doing? And they become celebrities. Everybody's invited them to their TV show. And I believe Satan's hand is in it because then everybody follows them, whether they're wrong or right. Satan is very crafty. He's very crafty. And in these last days, he's doing everything he can to sway people from following God. I believe COVID-19 came from the pit of hell. COVID-19 probably was invented by some demonic spirit because today a lot of people, a lot of people who used to go to church regularly don't go to church. For the, the, the years that they stop us from coming to church or didn't want the doors to be open or had limitation on how many comes into the building has caused people to get used to watching television. And so now the doors are open and nobody's showing up. The chairs are all empty. And I believe this is part of Satan's key. You know, God said, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves, especially when you know we come into the end of time. That's one of the schemes he has used. And many people are sitting at home watching television, thinking, I mean, I get it just as if I were in the building. But it's not true. There are some things you can get while you are in the house of God that you cannot get watching television. The touch of somebody, somebody embracing you, saying, how are you doing? And encouraging you to keep on with the Lord. You don't have that. You don't have the presence of God that when worship is going on, you begin to feel that presence of God that causes sometimes people to cry. You don't get that when you are doing it in your, in your house, watching television. But Satan has convinced a lot of Christians today not to go to church against God's word. Can I get an amen? amen? Another thing, he attacks us physically. He attacks our bodies. You remember the woman that was bent over in Luke chapter 13? When Jesus went to the chapel, and there was this woman that was bent over. And Jesus looked at her and all the priests focused their eyes on Jesus as to what he was going to do. And Jesus asked them, is it all right to do good on the Sabbath? Can I heal this woman that has been tormented or is being tormented by Satan all these 18 years. The Bible says the priest was so angry, but Jesus didn't care. He tied the woman and said, behold, that demon that had caused her to bend over left her. John 10.10 10 says it can be said with certainty that we are in an ongoing spiritual warfare against the devil and his demons. As we come to the end of time, Satan is going to hit every person. That's why every day you need to pray. Every day you need to pray. And he's not going to stop. I can tell from my own experience that this is something that he does. This year, 
for the first time in my life, I've been admitted three times in the hospital. I've never been admitted in the hospital. Three times. And I come home thinking I'm okay. And another thing hits. I come home thinking I'm okay. And another thing hits. Three times. I just came home just about two weeks ago. I was in critical care unit. They gave me eight, six pints of blood. Almost all my blood came out of me. But thank God, Jesus was with me. And I'm still here. Amen? Amen. He's still with me. And I, when I came out this time, I told the Lord, I said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I do not want to go back to the critical care unit anymore. Yeah. Enough is enough. Every demon that has been set against me, I want you to arrest them. They have no legal right to do what they're doing to my body. Amen. Satan wants to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. That's why he makes you sick. That's why he probably, if he can, he wants to take you out. He wants to kill you. Because if he kills you, then you will not fulfill your destiny. The people that God has ordained for you to touch for the kingdom, you may not be able to touch them. If you're dead. Hello? Do you know some people died before their time? Go read the Bible. The Bible said somewhere, why should you die before your time? It's, it's in the Bible somewhere. I don't know what it is, but you can die before your time. Yeah. And it's all because Satan does not want you yeah. to fulfill your destiny. You shouldn't die before your time. Yeah. You should finish your destiny. Yeah. Because somebody's life depends on your destiny. Somebody may not go to heaven if you die too early. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. Intellectual or mental. Satan is very smart. The Bible says he was, he was created with a sum of wisdom. Sum means total. He was created with total wisdom. So he's very, very smart. He's not a dummy. There's a lot of people that think Satan is dumb. Ah, I hate the stupid. Satan is very, very smart. If you want to know. This is why you need the Holy Spirit. He's not smarter than the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit created him. So whatever he has was given to him by the Holy Spirit. But when you have the Holy Spirit in you, then you can be smarter than him. But without the Holy Spirit, he can outsmart you very easily. You may think you're smart. You may think that's why the Bible says, if you think you're standing, watch, lest you fall. If you think you're smart, you need to be very careful because he has another trick under his sleeves that he can use and bring you down. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, intellectually, he's smart. This is why he told Adam and Eve, you will not die. Amen. God is just telling you the fear. But look at what they did. When Adam and Eve had that thing, they brought death to the human race. That's why we die. That's why human beings die. We were created not to die. We were supposed to live eternally. But when they disobeyed God, death came into the human race. Moral, moral life, lust, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh. You know, Satan tempts you with three things. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The lust 
of the flesh. It's everywhere around us today. Especially in this computer age that we live in. Satan has infiltrated the internet with pornography that a nine-year-old, seven-year-old child can be addicted to pornography. Seven-year-old, Pastor David, that's a mother came to me and I've got witnesses and said my seven-year-old is addicted to pornography. Seven-year-old, what do you know? You don't even know how to clean yourself. And you're addicted to pornography. How is this child going to grow up to be? What kind of person is this child going to grow up to become? With this, you know, and I, I've told you here that there are three parts of the human being. We are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. The spirit and the soul are information system. Information system. That's what I wanted somebody to remind me. Your spirit and your soul are information system. Like a computer. You can record, you can put stuff in, take some stuff out. I mean, it, listen, this is why Satan loves the information, the computer age, because he can program all of us with all the computer stuff that we're sitting in. Okay, this is why kids can be addicted. His, that's part of his tactics. I know because I've dealt with it. A few years ago, a mother brought his teenage son to me and said, Pastor David, my son is spending an hour in the bathroom taking a shower. An hour. And I said, an hour? What is he doing? He's not an elephant. But he's spending a whole hour in the bathroom taking a shower. So I said, bring him to me. He came and I, I, I just went straight, point blank. I said, are you masturbating? Yeah. <laughs> He's watching, watching pornography on his phone and masturbating in the bathroom. And I told him, I said, let me tell you something. You're recording all the pictures you're watching is being recorded in your mind. You don't know it, but you're recording all these filth from the pornography into your mind. I asked him, I said, you going to go to college? Yeah, just finished high school. Are you going to go to college? Yes. What are you going to study? I'm going to study medicine. His father was, is a doctor. I said, you won't make it unless you stop. I told him, I said, you will not make it unless you stop this pornography thing you're doing. I prayed for him. He went on to college. And to cut it short, he came home with zero GPA, grade point average on his first semester. The university kicked him out, gave him a letter not to come back because he didn't do anything. He just sat there for the three months doing nothing. His mind is so filled with that filth that he couldn't absorb anything he was being taught. Satan will make you think, oh, it's just, it's just fantasy. A lot of ministers have lost their ministry because of that. They sit in their offices watching a little fantasy. I know a friend that lost his, his, his wife, he lost his marriage because of pornography. I confronted him. Oh, I'm just using it to enhance my sex life. I said, you watch what he's going to do to you. And it wasn't too long, he and his wife got divorced. 
the devil is now releasing a lot of his wives into this world. And unless you put on the whole armor of God and get filled with the Holy Ghost and depend on the Holy Ghost every day, you're going to get caught. One of those wives is going to catch you. And you know what he is trying to do? Steal, kill, or destroy. That's, that's all he wants to do. Okay? He wants to destroy everything the Almighty God has purpose in your life. The Bible says Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came. The main purpose of Jesus coming to the world is to reveal. See, most people did not know how the devil operates. They didn't know the wiles of the devil. In the Old Testament times, people did not know how Satan was operating. But Jesus came and revealed it and destroyed it, uncovering, so we can resist it. We can resist it. You don't have to fall prey to Satan. You can resist him. The Bible says, commit yourself unto the Lord and resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Amen. He's going to come. He knows your weakness. You may think, you know, I'm strong. Uh, listen, he doesn't care if you're 100 years old. He knows something about you that you, you probably don't know. That's why you need to commit yourself unto the Lord. Okay? Keep your way pure. You know, in Psalm 119, verse 9 and 11, it says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. When you put God's word in your heart, it helps you to resist the devil. Every which way he comes, you can see him coming. That's why when he tried Jesus three times, oh, if you do this, see you're hungry. You're hungry. You fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. You're hungry. And you are the son of God. You can turn these stones into bread. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But stones are not meant to turn to bread. Hello? God did not create stones to be made into bread. Anytime you go against nature, what God has done, you go against God. And Jesus says, no, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He didn't stop there. Three times. Oh, you've come to save the world. You don't have to go to the cross. Look at, have you seen people hang on the cross? Have you seen the degradation and the shame? You want to go through that? Listen, you don't have to go through that. It's bowed down to me. The world is mine. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you on a silver platter. But Jesus says, no, Satan. Only God ought to be worshipped. He didn't worship him. There's a lot of people today that are taking the deception of Satan. You know, the wiles of the devil, and they are falling prey to it. Even Christians, okay? Christians are falling prey to Satan's wild. You know, hey, I, there's nothing wrong with me making this kind of money. If I make it, I can help the church. I mean, I've had people say, oh, I play the numbers. I play the lotto. So if I, if I win, I can help build the checks. And they spend all their money playing the, the lotto. And they can't even buy food for their children because they get hooked on, on the numbers and the lotto, thinking that they're going to win. And their children suffer. Let me tell you, Satan has got a lot of stuff in his, in his pocket. And he can 
who do you need without you being knowledgeable? Okay? So, draw close to God. Draw close to God. That's, that's the only antidote. Put on the whole armor of God. Pray. Steady the word. Spend time worshiping God. And the Holy Spirit will always open your eyes to see the tactics of the devil. The Holy Spirit will always, you know, before he even opens his mouth, the Holy Spirit will have just whispered something in your ears. Sometimes he has asked me to do some stuff that I said, but there's nothing wrong with that. Holy Spirit, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it. You don't see anything wrong with it right now. Until the trap sprints you. Then you realize, oh my God. I mean, it may look good right now. What about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? You need to depend on the Holy Spirit. Okay? Satan also uses condemnation. Condemnation. You do something wrong and he will con he'll make you feel like you've committed your pardonable sin. He condemn you. What is condemnation? Condemnation, let me see my, you know, Conviction. What is my condemnation? I'm trying to. Condemnation is for Satan to make you feel like you've done something real bad, something that cannot be forgiven. Okay? Jesus came, and Jesus did not come to condemn according to the Word of God. Jesus came to give us freedom. From the condemnation of the devil. Okay? Condemnation comes from Satan and is meant to tear you down. Make you feel so bad that you think, you know, there's nothing that can erase what you've done. But the Bible says there's no sin that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. I don't care, what, even if you have committed murder. If you repent of it and ask God to forgive you, He will forgive you. Yes. Amen? Amen? There's nothing you can do that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. But Satan can cause you to feel so down that you think, no, nah, I don't believe God is going to forgive me. This is why a lot of people kill themselves. A lot of people kill themselves because... Satan condemns them until they, they, they feel like there's no hope. There's no hope. And the only way to check out and they kill themselves. There's always hope. His name is Jesus. You go to him. He will set you free. Amen. Conviction is known in the Bible as godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. Godly sorrow leads to what? Repentance. When God convicts you, you're doing something and God, the Spirit of God convicts you, He brings you into godly sorrow. You begin to feel sorrowful and sorry for what you're doing. And what you do is you go to God for God to forgive you. That's not the purpose of Satan. Satan will condemn you. Look at you. call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a pastor. Look at it. You call yourself, you know, a man of God. Look at what you do. I mean, he condemn you until you feel like it's just hopeless. I don't care what Satan does. You can ask God and he will forgive you. But that's some of his tactics. These are some of the wiles that he uses to destroy people. This is why people are killing themselves left and right. 
because he condemns them and condemns them until they get away, they think there's no hope. There's always hope. Amen? Because the Bible says, if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us of all our unrighteousness. Amen? Amen? So, don't allow the devil to condemn you to a point where you think there's no hope. Always run to Jesus. He's, his hands are wide open to receive you. Fear is one of the tactics also that he uses. Fear. You know, there's good fear and there's bad fear. Hello? If you fear to walk across the four lane or eight lane highway, it's a good fear because you could get hit by a vehicle. Hello? If you go into the wilderness where there are animals, wild animals, lions and tigers, and you are afraid, it's good for you because one of those things can, can kill you. But Satan can create fear, inordinate fear in you over something that you should not be afraid of. I know people that are afraid of a mouse. I had a man in my check, big old man, seven foot something, and big by 300 pounds. Some of you probably, William, his name was William too. William would jump through this roof if a little mouse runs across his path. He was so scared of a mouse. One day I asked him, I said, William, have you seen a mouse kill somebody? <laughs> no. So why are you so afraid of a mouse? I mean, your big toe is bigger than this mouse. Why are you so afraid of this mouse? It's an inordinate fear. It's demonic fear that Satan, I don't know, maybe, maybe when he was a kid, his mother was so scared of mice that when mother sees a little mouse, and that thing that it did to be afraid of the mouse. And I said, William, pray and get this thing out of you because it's not of God. God has not given you that kind of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Satan will cause you to have some fear that is not proper. It's not biblical. There was a television show a few years ago that they were showing people afraid of things that they should not be afraid of. There was a woman who was afraid of a cotton wool a ball of cotton wool. One was afraid of, uh, uh, what, what is this, aluminum foil. One lady was afraid of roaches. They brought roaches on the stage and she, she passed out. I don't know, it was it showed here in Nashville. Okay, I don't know if any of you saw it. She, they brought, you know, a little box of Roaches and turn them loose. Oh man, she passed out on the stage. This is an ordinary fear. Because you can just lift your leg and kill almost all of them. You should not be afraid of anything like that. But Satan can cause you. And there's a purpose. There's a purpose because he wants to stop you from doing something that God wants you to do. He doesn't just give you fear because he wants you to fear. There's a reason why he gives you those things. He doesn't do anything just for doing it. Okay? This is why if you have anything like fear in your life, ask yourself, why am I afraid of a mouse? Why is it that I'm afraid of a, a cockroach? You, you need to ask yourself. Ask yourself that question. Have I seen a cockroach kill anybody? Have I seen a mouse jump on any human being and kill? No. Why am I so afraid? You need to 
deal with that. Because this is a strategy of Satan to hinder what God has purposed in your life. We deal with fear. We deal with fear with the word of God. What has God said about fear? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? How a love and a sound mind. If you're afraid of a mouse when you are seven foot something and you jump in through the roof, it's not a sound mind. Amen? Amen. What else that has he got in his ass now? Your tough life. What you, what is going on in this little year, two years? What are you thinking? What is going on in your mind? Let me read the word of God. Romans 8, 5, it says, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live according to the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. Okay? What an astonishing truth. Here Paul is saying that one's behavior, either ungodly or godly, will be the results of the thoughts he has been pen pondering. This is why we must be more disciplined in our thought life. Paul certainly was. He said he took captive every thought Everything that was going on in his mind, he took captive of it. What you think, the way you're thinking, can mess you up. What is going on in your mind? If negative stuff is going on in your mind, everything somebody can say, you will construe it for something bad. There are people that, you know, they can see because of the way they think, they're thinking all the time. They think everybody is out to get them or something. And they're not able to function properly because <laughs> there's no, I will deal with this next week, okay? The biggest one is rejection. It's one of the biggest tools in the arsenal of Satan. And I'll deal with that next week because I, I, it's so long I can't deal with it today. A lot of people have stuff going on through their minds and it's affecting the way they live Amen. on this planet. Amen. You need to, Paul says, I, I capture everything that I'm thinking of. When I know it's not God, I take hold of it. And I bring it under the authority of the word of God. If you continue to think evil things, let me tell you, Satan will feed you a lot of information. Are you all listening to me? The more, I mean, you can, you can look at two people standing, talking about something, you're standing two feet away from, ten feet away from them, and you think they're talking about you. Because of the way you're thinking. Everything you think about is negative. Get out of it. Get out of it in the name of Jesus. Take hold of that thinking, thinking. Because it will make you a slave. You remember the children of Israel when they were coming out of Egypt? When they got to the place where they have eaten the manna every day, every day, what did they say? We're tired of this manna. We're tired of this manna. We would rather go back to Egypt. Because when we were in Egypt, we had cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, garlic. But now, we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. I mean, in Egypt, every day, seven days a week, 
they were made to produce these bricks to build Pharaoh's buildings. They were equipped every day. This is why God was so angry and sent Moses to go and deliver them. Because they were crying every day. The only time you get freedom at that time was when you die. That's the only time you're free. So long as you're alive, seven days a week you were working. Hard labor. And God comes to deliver you and you go in the desert in a little hardship. Man, I wish I was in Egypt. I wish, you know, we used to have onions and coconuts and this. I mean, godly. Go back. Go back to where you go in your garden. The only thing is, we still do it today. We still do it today. You know, when we get saved, we become Christians, and we walk in with the Lord, and you know, Christian life is not easy. If anybody tells you Christian life is easy, he's lying to you. Because as a Christian on this earth, you're living in a devil's territory. He's going to use everything to make your life miserable, okay? Everything. And sometimes people that have been saved from a lifestyle of sin, you know, man, I was enjoying my life when I was a sinner. I used to go to the, the, the parties and do this and do that and, you know, but they forget the times when they will come home and cry. They forget the times when somebody beat them to the pulp while they were in the world. They forget the suffering that they have gone through, that by the grace of God, God has set them free. And sometimes they wish like the children of Israel. Well, I wish I was back in the world. Go! But with the Holy Ghost, I just say, go, I suck you and send you back to the world and let you go suffer more from the hands of the devil. And it's all because of the way we're thinking. The way we think can make us do stupid stuff. Yes. This is why you need to check any... See, most people don't know that thoughts come from the devil. Right. Satan can throw something into your mind from outside. And you would think it's your own thought. It's not your own thought. Weigh it with the word of God. When you weigh that thought with the word of God, and it doesn't line up, kick it out. Because it's your property. Once it gets into your head, it's your property. Can I get an amen? amen. I can do anything with what belongs to me. And so if Satan throws some negative things into my, th my thought life, if I look at it, wait with the word of God, and it doesn't line up, hey, Get out. This doesn't line up with the word of God. And I don't want to entertain it. This is how you set yourself free. These are some of the stuff Satan does. He's doing it today. He's doing it today. So I want to tell you that you need to be careful because we are in the last days. And he's doing everything. He's working hard. He's working 24 hours a day to see how many people he can take to hell. I was watching a guy that has walked with the devil for so long. And he said sometimes, God, by the grace of God, he's saved. And he said that sometimes when they go to meeting, that's all they talk about how to destroy Christians and Christianity. I mean, everything, all the planning they are doing every day, how do we destroy Christians and Christianity? This is why you became a Christian. 
because they never thought about destroying Hindu, Hinduism. They never thought about destroying Islam. All they thought about was how to destroy Christianity. So he one day sat down and man, if these people almost always want to destroy Christianity, then there might be something in Christianity. And that's how he searched out and became a Christian. And today he's preaching the word of God. Satan wants to destroy you. But thank God, God has given us everything we need to survive until he comes and takes us from here. He didn't leave us orphans. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will help us. Amen? It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter. Depend on the Lord. Hang on to your faith. Stay in the Word. And keep on praying. Because God will intervene. Just like he did with Job. The devil did his best. But at the long last, God said, the same thing you have my mind. You tried. You lost. If you don't give up, one day God will step in and bring you what you need. Can I get an amen? amen? Let me tell you, three months ago, I couldn't even walk into this chapel. I was almost a cripple. I got a walker and stuff in my house that I'm not even using. I, got a, I used to walk in the walking stick. But I told myself, no, in the name of Jesus, amen. I'm going to walk and the devil will not make me a cripple. No demon in hell is going to stop me from doing what God has called me to do. Amen. And I fight it till the day I die. Amen? Amen? That's why I'm encouraging you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Fight! Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. start shooting, start doing whatever you need to do as a soldier. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right.